You know, there's loads of articles about the telly license in the newspapers at the minute, and the Express kind of leads the way in that. Most days now you'll find an article about the TV license in the Express, but it's mostly just rehash stuff or dodgy information or just getting the discount if you're on pension credit or you're blind or something. But when you step away from sort of the mainstream main newspapers, you can find some really well-written articles, you know. And this one, for instance, ticks that box for me. Have a look at this with me. Why making the BBC a subscription service is unworkable. So, I mean, a headline like that's going to grab my attention anyway, isn't it? Because I'm in this game and I don't believe they're ready to be a subscription service. I don't think that's in their immediate future. I think we're years and years and years away from that. Way past the 2027 charter. I just don't see it happening. The future of the BBC is to be commercial. But let's see what this person, who wrote this, where are we? Patrick Barwise and Peter York wrote this on March the 7th. So let's have a look at this and see why they think being a subscription service is unworkable. Should be interesting. Why the BBC won't be funded by subscriptions in 2028. For any subscription service, you need to know which customers have paid and you need conditional access technology to exclude those who haven't. But at present, 10.7 million UK households watch television only through Freeview, which has no CA capability. Well, yeah, granted the televisions don't have conditional access built into them. You know, it's tough to do over Freeview, isn't it? But the BBC does have that with their iPlayer service. That has conditional access. You have to sign in and you have to say you've got a television license. That's conditional access. And soon change that to a paywall. It's not too hard, is it? People in these homes tend to be older and a disproportionate number are living alone and or with disabilities. For many, the BBC is a lifeline. In 2021, Freeview accounted for 46% of all television viewed on a TV set and over half of the viewing of BBC TV. And the thing that makes me sick, which is a little bit off topic, is 46% of all television viewed on a TV set comes from watching Freeview. Right? But not everybody who's doing that is watching BBC. They're watching other channels. But in order to watch those other channels, you have to pay the license fee. Anything that's wrong. If the BBC went, Freeview wouldn't go, and you could all enjoy watching broadcast TV free of charge. They don't get any of the money. You'd think the other TV channels would also be in the fight against the TV license, wouldn't you? Where's ITV? Where's Channel 5? Where's all the other channels in this fight saying scrap the TV license so everybody can watch us free of charge? It's weird, isn't it? I've never understood that. A bit off topic, but yeah, it just seems odd. But anyway, no government would dare deny so many voters the ability to access the BBC services, even if they were willing to pay a subscription, because the CA technology is not yet in place. So all they're saying is, if they put the BBC behind a paywall, it's going to piss a lot of people off. But it's already pissing a lot of people off. But the difference with putting it behind a paywall is, you could then choose not to pay it or not. You know, I don't understand the problem. You know, just throw it behind the paywall now and people will either pay it, or they won't. And the people who can't access it, they'll soon find something else to watch. There isn't that much on the BBC that's going to bother people too much. And they're not going to put BBC News behind a paywall, are they? They're going to leave BBC News Channel on there, and that's kind of the main thing people watch the BBC for in the last few years, really, isn't it? But the reason they're not going to do it is this bit. Realistically, it's hard to see how a switch to BBC subscriptions would technically be feasible until fast broadband is both universally available across the country and universally adopted in every home. Yeah, that's what the politicians have been using for ages to kick the can down the road about the TV licence fee. Because, oh, we can't put it behind a paywall until literally everyone in the country can access super fast broadband in order to stream TV. But it's never going to happen. There will never be 100% super fast broadband coverage. How long have we had mobile phones for? You know, mobile phones have been going since, what, the early 90s or something, isn't it, really, when the people started getting them? I think I've got mine, my first one in 96, 97, something. I had a pager in 95. But anyway, you know, how long have we had phones for? And there still isn't complete blanket 100% coverage here in the UK, is there? There are places you can go still where you won't get a mobile phone signal. And how many years is that? 30, 40 years of having mobile phone signals out there? So we're never going to have 100% universal, super fast broadband, total blanket coverage in the UK. It's never going to happen. So they can use that excuse to kick the can down the road forever. They just can. Clearly, the BBC will not be funded by subscriptions in 2028. But what about the longer term picture once subscription funding is at least technically feasible? Suppose we look further ahead to, say, 2048 and assume by then the government has managed to crack the conditional access problem. Blimey, I wonder how much the TV licence fee would be by 2048. Probably be five, six hundred quid a year. 
wouldn't it? So we've got to say from this article, and they're right. I mean, it's a good long article. I'll put the link below if you want to read all of it. It's actually quite a well-written article, which is different for some of the stuff I look at, really, isn't it? It's quite a well-written article, and they make some fair points in there. So you've got to say, well, they're not going to be ready to do it in 2020. I never believed they were anyway. This says the same things I was saying about that, but in a better way because they're better at this sort of thing as their job and it. So what are we going to do? Because it's not going to be a subscription service. So the only option to get rid of the TV license at the end of the charter is to make the BBC go commercial. And they're just not going to do it, are they? They're not going to do it because what's ITV get? I think it's like 1.4 billion, maybe a little bit more from ad revenue across all its services that it offers a year. The BBC gets 3.2 billion and doesn't have to do any work for that, doesn't have to bring in advertisers, doesn't have to work hard to make better stuff to please advertisers. They're making twice the money for a tenth of the work. So uh, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. In reality, the average subscription would need to be much higher to cover both the missing revenue from households who chose not to subscribe and the huge marketing and customer service costs inherent in any subscription service. But it can't be, can it? That's yet another problem for the subscription model. Because it can't be higher than the competitors. You can't charge more than what Netflix are charging. And it's already more than what Netflix are charging. So let's say if they went subscription, they tripled it. And they called it, what? Well, well, let's say 15, 20 quid a month or something. So triple what Netflix costs. Who's going to subscribe to that? When Netflix has got so many years ahead of what the BBC can offer. You know, so its, it's content library is going to be better and more mature, and their model's going to have been all worked out. The BBC are new to the game, don't have such a big catalogue of stuff, and they're charging three times more than Netflix. No one's going to subscribe to it. No one's going to subscribe to it. It's not going to happen, is it? No one knows how much higher the average BBC subscription would have to be to reach a steady state, where the income was enough to cover its higher overheads and the revenue lost from non-subscribers while maintaining its programme investment. But it's hard to see a subscription model being sustainable with an average subscription less than 50% higher than the licence fee. It could be far more. Who knows? Thing is, if they did go subscription, I wouldn't care if they charged 50 quid a month because you wouldn't pay it, would you? And you wouldn't be feel forced to pay it. No one would come knocking on your door demanding that you pay it. And you could just get on with your life and ignore the BBC. And, you know, if there is three times more than what Netflix are charged... They'll go bust. They'll be gone in three or four years once the money runs out. Unless the government jumps back in to bail them out, which probably would, wouldn't they? But we need to get rid of it, having its status as a state broadcaster, and just give it a standard broadcast license and say, right, you're a broadcaster now. Do what you got to do. You want to show ads to survive? Show ads to survive. You want to be a subscription to survive? Be a subscription to survive. But there's no more money from us. You're no longer a state broadcaster, and you will not be funded directly by a tax on the British people. So go and get on with it if you want to be a success. That's the best way to deal with this. They need to tell them now. You know, tell them now. The chart is up for renewal in 2027. Write the BBC a letter now, Nadine, and just say, right, that's it. 2027, there will be no more licence fee funding for you. So get your house in order and find out how you're going to power yourself going forward. Or shut up shop. Shut up shop. You should shut up shop. So yeah, as I said, it's quite a long article, this one. So I'll put the link below. Go and have a look at it. Read the whole thing for yourself. It's quite well written, and they make some fair points and some not-so-fair points, obviously, but that's just articles in general for you, isn't it? So have a read of it. Let me know what you think about the whole thing. Do you think the BBC could go and become a subscription model starting in 2027? I mean, if it goes to 2048, absolutely pointless. Pointless. It can't go on that long. Another 20 years over the... <laughs> The standard charts are expiring. Ah, what a ridiculous situation. Although it would keep my YouTube channel going, so it wouldn't be too bad, would it? But let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.